ends in Plainfield, New Jersey, most students head home. Hey guys. But about 350 of them take to the cafeterias, gyms, and classrooms for a federally funded after-school program known as 21st Century Community Learning Centers. We align what we do to the school day to support school day teachers, but with after-school and summer learning opportunities, we can really hone in on our instructional craft and be more innovative. I really think it's important because it could help you learn a lot of more things that regular schools don't teach you. There's so many studies that say that after school time is just critical for what our kids may go through, what they may face. If they don't have a place to go, they're probably roaming the streets. I mean, they could be potentially by themselves, mom and dad working. We don't know what their situations are. So having that safe place provides an opportunity for them to learn and grow in a safe environment. Some kids don't have the necessary um, supplies at home, they don't have the people to help them, nor do they have people that really care about them all the time. So some kids really need teachers that will work with them after school and care for them. My opinion of after school programs is that it's a great way for our kids to get out of trouble, do something after school and stay productive. After school programs will affect children in a positive way because it will teach them to communicate with others and to be themselves. You can help them all day with their homework, do this, do that. Negatively, you can just be another teacher who doesn't care. I mean, um, basketball, it affected me. Like, it gave me something to do after school and like something to look forward to. It affected me positively because my teacher, she really cared for me. She was just like, she was more like a big sister, you can say, and she really helped me a lot with a lot of my work, a lot of stuff that I didn't understand. Softball affected me because it kept me out of trouble after school, and it was fun, and it really taught me to communicate with others. Your teacher has to work with all the kids. It's never really a one-on-one -on -one situation, and with aftercare teachers, they can really help you. And for me, it was super positive because I learned a lot, and... I got to meet somebody that I still talk to to this day as like a mentor. Change the people that they let work with kids because I know a lot of places let anybody work with kids and that's, you should really have to go through background checks, you should have to have, you know, experience along the lines and what you're doing because I know at my old job, you know, they let anybody work with them and it negatively affected the kids as well as the teachers because they don't know how to work with kids so they get frustrated and they want to hurry up and leave when in reality you just have to have patience they don't have to have understanding. I think because there's teachers that don't want to work there. I think there's teachers that don't see the bigger picture, that don't realize how good aftercare programs can be, that rather go home. It should really be pressed for minorities because we don't have the same resources as you know the next rich kid that's going to private school so we really need that extra one-on-one -on -one time there's some minorities that are way smart iq is super high but then there's some that really need that personal attention and that extra one-on-one -on -one time to help with homework or you know tutoring reading whatever it may be in specific areas to provide a safe 
place for our members. That's my number one priority, it's just that they're safe. And second, that our kids are given all of the information that they could ever need to make positive decisions in the future. It makes me patient and, you know, they really confide in me about a lot and I can really sit and talk to my kids. They can be honest with me and I can be honest with them no matter age. They just really, they like to be there and I like to come to work because my kids make, you know, they make my day better. I could be like, oh, I don't want to go to work. And you know, I just see my kids and they're just like, oh, you know, Miss Jackie, hey. And I just, I don't know, it makes me feel good to know that there's kids that really look up to me so therefore I have to be a good person within myself. It's not about my hardships that make me special but the way I overcome them to enhance my future. <laughs> Ramona Dixon has just been announced as the Youth of the Year uh, for 2010 through 2011. She's a freshman at uh, Arizona State University. She is a uh, Longtime member of the Boys and Girls Club, and uh, she can tell you a little bit about. Tell them a little bit about your your history, where you've come from, and what you've been doing. I'm 25, but up until I was 13 years old, uh, my family and I were actually homeless. So we were literally going in dumpsters and pulling out cardboard boxes and sleeping on them in San Diego, California. Um, it, it was very hard to focus on schoolwork because I was always thinking about where my next meal was coming from or if my family is okay or better yet, where are we even going to sleep that night. But it was one thing my mom always taught me that it's not about my obstacles that were going to make me special, but how I overcome them that was going to make me be unique and stand out from everyone else. Um, so she decided to move from San Diego to Tempe, Arizona when I was 10 years old. And we were still homeless for a time period from there, but we started going to uh, live at UMOM New Day Centers, which was a long-term shelter. And that shelter finally provided us with stability, three meals a day, a place to go every day after school. Finally, after that, I started going to the Boys and Girls Club. The Boys and Girls Club affected my life from the very beginning. Um, it provided me with all the resources that I needed in order to be successful in school. And it also gave me a family, but from there, um, it helped me to graduate from high school third in my class and then it helped me to uh, win scholarship money to go on after high school and be successful. After graduating high school I became the National Youth of the Year for Boys and Girls Clubs of America where I got to travel the world and basically represent the over 4.2 million youth that the Boys and Girls Club serves and just sharing my story on how the Boys and Girls Club impacted my life. Like, I couldn't believe that I was being named the National Youth of the Year. I couldn't believe that I was getting to meet very influential individuals. I couldn't believe that I was at the White House or I was just like oh my god four years ago I was homeless you know. So I definitely didn't um, think that this was really happening to me even though that it was. I was in Essence Magazine for being one of 28 most influential African American women in America um, and it was a top 28 power list so the other people that were on here was like Oprah and Michelle Obama and Jada Pinkett Smith so it was a huge list and I was only 18 years old at that time. So. the students at the S.L. Lewis Elementary School in College Park, Georgia, the school day is done. But the learning is not over. More than 130 of the students, most of whom live in low-income households, are part of an after-school program called Wings for Kids. But under President Trump's new proposed federal budget, Wings' primary source of funding would be eliminated. The billion dollar cuts to the 21st Century Learning Centers are about the same amount President Trump is proposing to offer to charter schools in his budget. Deep cuts at the Department of Education, but supporters of the move say the $9 billion rollback will put the department on a much needed diet. Relies on federal funds to survive. Relies on federal funds to survive. Relies on federal funds to survive. If I had to tell President Trump about cutting up the school program. There's kids that really need teachers and other people besides family, besides their everyday Monday through Friday teacher. They need the, another person that can come and, you know, talk to them and they can listen to them. Our after school programs are needed, you know. How else do we keep our kids off the streets if they're not in 
programs and they're on the streets causing problems, causing problems for people's businesses, which he strongly believes in. So would you rather have a kid going to the Boys and Girls Club or the YMCA or whatever after school program learning about how to build a business or would you rather them out in the streets terrorizing businesses and taking them down? Where they need people there for them, especially the minorities. He is going to affect children's grid. You have no idea the value that these hours after school give to a child. Whether they are fed, whether they have someone that they can trust at home, you have no idea what they're facing. You, you take after school away, you potentially take their entire future because then they have nothing. I feel like it's very unnecessary because normally it's not like so often that after school happens and in certain schools they don't have it. It helps a lot and it boosts our confidence in a lot. To the program, they will go either home to unsupervised houses or their parents will be required to quit their jobs and stay home with them. Jessica Williams has two daughters in the program. What happens if it goes away? Um, I really don't know how I could, I really don't know. I don't see many people that look like me like succeed in doing it because it's the way that the teachers and the special people teach us and it's like really hard for us to learn a lot of that. I like sometimes have struggle in doing it and then our classes end early so after school can teach me a lot more things. Ninety percent of uh, boys and girls club members graduate from high school, and we're working on obviously on that other ten percent. But that's 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 the focus of our new initiative right. to uh, make sure that each and every child uh, has the opportunity to graduate from high school. So let's talk about. And by the way, uh, yeah. Ramona graduated with a three point nine wow. two three point nine two grade point average. Well, we could use those marks <laughs> around here. I'll tell you that <laughs> right here in the newsroom. Oh. Pick yourself back up, seems like you're always fighting You never need a reason or a cause When the lights are out and all the rest are hiding You'll be the one Pacing up and down, waiting for your moment like it's taken you a lifetime to prepare Standing up to them Giving everything but needless to say You're just a stranger 